Hi everyone, I'm Soft Set and welcome to this new video of We Would Ramble. If you are new to this channel, we have a series where I take you with me in the process of remaking my 12 year old webcomic AC New Insights that I drew from 2010 to 2022. I've created a playlist with all the videos of the series so you can watch it in one go. I highly recommend you checking out the other videos as well so you have a context for this video. Last time we talked about improving the story. I also have the old webcomic version linked in the description. Before we start, I want to put a disclaimer again, the We Would Ramble series is not a tutorial. My goal is not to teach you something, but to hold myself accountable to work on my webcomic reboot by making videos and showing you guys my process and methods. It may be helpful for you though. I do some research on the topics and I come up with my own definitions based on the research, but they may not be accurate. All my resources are in the description if you want to check them out. With that being said, let's dive in. Today we want to look at the story structure and outline of old version, analyze how we can improve that for the comic reboot and what methods are used. While writing this video script, I was wondering what is the difference between structure and outline. Here are the definitions I will use for this video and how I understand them. I would say that an outline is a rough draft of all the things that happen in your story, like when you draw something, you make a first sketch to visualize your idea and then you put the lines and colors and details in. Story structure, on the other hand, is often theoretical. It's like a pattern that describes how a story can be structured and told. When I think about story structure, I think about the three act track, seven point story structure and the hero's journey for example. I think they are like similar patterns people found while analyzing stories and it seems to be more of a tool that can help you narrating your ideas and outlining your story. The two terms are very close to each other but not entirely the same. For now, this will be the definitions I will go by. To return to the topic, we already talked a bit about the structure of old version, which was a mess. <laughs> <laughs> the old version of AC New Insights had an outline, but it didn't use a story structure back then. At least not consciously. That's because in the beginning I came up with a story on the spot as I was drawing the pages. There was no plan, head empty, no thoughts. Just a teenager who started a comic on a whim. There are a lot of plot lines in the old version that are introduced and later dropped that I will probably not include in the reboot. That's what happens if you don't have a plan before creating your story. <laughs> you will end up with ideas you will not finish story elements that will not be resolved, and so on. As time went by, I decided to sit down and create an outline, to think about where the story should go, what the end would be, what plot twist I could implement when. I was very unorganized, I had multiple documents spread around my computer, some I totally forgot. My outline was pretty much just me writing down what will happen chronologically, sometimes very detailed, sometimes not at all. I don't think that was a bad thing to be honest, because it worked for me. However, it was pretty hard to find things again. <laughs> Every now and then I took some time to work on and edit my old outline to get the best story possible based on the messy start and I would claim that I did a pretty good job with that. But like I previously said in other videos, I was just really displeased with having to adjust the present story to the beginning and, and being limited in what I could do with the story and the characters. So what do I want to change in regards to the structure? First of all, the exposition. The exposition is kinda very bad. <laughs> I will show you what I mean by summarizing every chapter of volume 1. Chapter 1. First day of high school, our protagonist Yuri meets Shiro, develops a crush, but puts her feelings aside because he's the school's crush. They become friends instead. Two new students named Naoki and Yukiko join the class and, and they stalk Shiro. They join the tennis club and Shiro and Naoki play a match. Chapter 2. Yuri and Shiro have a date, Naoki and Yukiko watch them secretly. Suddenly the two, Naoki and Yukiko, get a mysterious emergency notification and Yukiko runs off. The next day, Yukiko's not at school, she's heavily injured and unconscious. Naoki's very distressed by that. Chapter 3. While Yukiko is unconscious, she finds a shadow version of herself and wakes up but loses her memory of Naoki. Chapter 4. The whole chapter 4 is dedicated to restore Yukiko's memory by replaying a scene of a boy's love to Jinji of Naoki and Shiro that Yui drew. <laughs> Yukiko still doesn't remember him. Chapter 5. Naoki makes a plushie of Yukiko because he made her a promise that if he can't protect her, he will give her something self-made. That makes her remember him again. Chapter 6 and 7. Yui gets attacked by a monster that can manipulate memories, the same monster that attacked Yukiko before. Suddenly Yui gets weird visions from a woman she has never seen before and right before Yui gets hit by the monster, a mysterious barrier around her saves her. Then Naoki, Yukiko and Shiro defeated by using supernatural power 
hours and it is revealed that there are more people like them. Yuri finds out that they are part of a secret organization for people with supernatural powers who fight against these monsters and another evil organization. The mission of a good organization is to find a Hana, which means flower in Japanese, a rare kind of a supernatural people who have all been killed in a massacre many years ago. Yuri recognizes that the woman she saw is also a Hana. And that was volume 1. Let's talk about it. First of all, we have all these unnecessary plot elements from the first volume. The tennis match, the whole BL subplot, Yukiko losing her memory just to gain it back three chapters later. It's such a mess. The beginning of the story is supposed to introduce you to the characters, explain the basics. Why is any of it even there? <laughs> it's not relevant to the story at all except for the memory loss. And I know that Teenage Me made this memory loss arc to show that the monsters can manipulate the memories of people, even the main characters. It was supposed to be a setup to have this big reveal about the organizations and the monsters and the people with supernatural powers, but there's so many problems with that. Number one, the reader is not attached to the characters yet, so this whole part doesn't have the impact you want it to have. Who cares if Yukiko lost her memory and who cares about Naoki being distressed about that? We don't know anything about their relationship yet. Number two, at this point the reader knows nothing about the world. New information and weird Google Translate terms are thrown at the reader and are not explained and it makes the whole reading experience extremely confusing. Sometimes it can be really cool to be thrown in a completely new story without any explanation and having to discover the world on your own like in the Lock Tomb book series but you have to be an exceptional storyteller to do that and I am not that. <laughs> Number three, this whole memory loss arc isn't even about the main character Yui but about Naomi Oki and Yukiko, these two characters I just enjoyed more at that moment. It's like a random filler arc in the middle of a final battle against the main antagonist. These are my main problems with exposition structure wise, but I still have a lot of things to say. Show, don't tell. While this memory loss has too much show and no telling at all, some chapters are all about telling us stuff. The biggest example of that are chapter 7, 11 and 12. In chapter 7 it's revealed that monsters, people with supernatural powers and secret organizations exist. It's a big exposition dialogue. Personally I think it is okay that there is all this explaining because we finally reveal the mysteries that were unresolved in the memory loss part. Chapter 11 and 12 are worse regarding that. In these chapters Yuri and other characters visit the headquarters of a secret organization while some actual important plot happens in chapter 12. Most of chapter 11 is the gang walking through the halls and explaining stuff about the organization to Yuri. Very exciting isn't it? If you are not to Gashi Yoshihiro, the writer of Hunter x Hunter. You really can't get away with an exposition text wall. And Togashi Sensei is only allowed to do that because I am a massive Hunter x Hunter fan, okay? <laughs> When I was younger, I used to love these very long exposition dialogues in shonen manga. I really did. But now I can understand why it may not be the best decision. <laughs> I'm far away from being a great storyteller. I still have problems with telling too much instead of showing, but I will try my best. Next point. Character arcs are badly planned, too short or too long. Some characters did get way more attention than others because I liked them more. Yes, I'm a bad mom for having favorites, but please know that I love all my characters with all my heart. That being said, some characters had really long multiple character arcs while some had none. I'm so sorry I got Daisuke. In the inside I will forever be a Naruto kid so I don't know if I can actually stop making long ass character focused arcs and flashbacks but what I can definitely try is getting the characters more involved in the story. Make the story fit into the main story. Make them part of the narrative. That being said let's talk about the main character Yui. There was no focus on the main character. The main story of AC New Insights is about finding out about the mysteries that involve Yui and her past. But my girl just didn't get a lot of screen time because all the other characters got theirs. It's not that she did not have a personality at all later. I actually really like her but she got overshadowed by a lot of characters and that really sucks. She also didn't have a lot of agency and didn't take any action. My plan was and still is that the main story, Yui's story, takes place over the whole duration of a comic while other characters get their individual character arcs every now and then. I want them to be puzzle pieces to build up the main story but that means so I have to improve my main protagonist so you root for her. I want Yui to have more personality, more agency and especially more flaws and we will talk about that in the videos where I redesign all of my characters so stay tuned. Next point. 
plot-driven versus character-driven story. Another thing is that I always thought that my comic is very character-driven because the characters are developed very deeply in my opinion. But now reflecting on Yuri, it does seem to have more plot than I thought. Character-driven stories doesn't mean the characters are good, it means the narrative is pushed by the character's action and motivations, while plot-driven stories have story elements that the characters go through and experience. I don't think it's bad at all to have a plot-driven story, but now that I know the difference between these two, I want to make the more passive characters of the old version more active and give them more agency. It also means that I have to improve the plot. <laughs> Now that we have talked about what I want to change, let's talk about how the new version will structure and outline its story. How do I approach the outline for the new version of my comic? Personally, I think that the biggest problem lies in the beginning and not having a plan at all at first. A lot of points I mentioned did happen because I wasn't as experienced as a storyteller as I am now. Not saying that I'm a great storyteller now, <laughs> but I did improve and I want to improve more. Considering that, I did make an outline for the reboot while also looking up different story structures. A lot of this current outline is taken from my old version's outline because there are still many plot lines I worked on for years and I want to tell them. That being said, I will make a lot of changes to this outline every now and then. As I said multiple times, I'm a gardener storyteller and if the story just happens to go to a different direction, I am not opposed to it. Especially if I aim for a more character driven approach and have a lot of changes planned. Let's remind ourselves of the four time saving tips from Lars Martinson. Let nothing be sacred. Once again, great video, you should definitely watch it. How do I structure the reboot? So I was working on my new outline and looking for a story structure simultaneously, trying to find a story structure that suits my story and I had a lot of problems with it. First of all, there are so many story structures you can use. Three act structures, seven point story structures, hero's journey, many many more and they all were so similar to me. Which makes sense because these structures try to capture and categorize stories and fiction. Do you remember the five elements of plot that I mentioned in my previous reboot ramble video? I feel like these are the very basics that are in every story structure some way. But it is a bit short and my story is very long so I tried to search the perfect one for me. I found the website storyplanner.com where they help you find story structures to plan your story depending on how developed your idea is, what kind of story it is and so on. I think it can be an extremely good website but I was completely overwhelmed by it. <laughs> Maybe because my comic is a huge project I really have to scale it down and it's been in long development or wherever already started so I wasn't really sure what plan to go with but I think you should give it a try if you're still in the development phase of your story idea. Second of all I felt very limited with these structures because my outline didn't fit in perfectly. Is it because my story is a mess or did I just not find the perfect one? Also I thought that it might be too predictable using these known theories and in addition to that my working approach is so different and not structured at all and it was really Really hard for me to fill in these text boxes that were so specific or not specific enough. But then I realized that I don't have to use these story structures step by step accurately. Some writers base their stories on these theories and some do not even use story structures. So I loosely used a mix of a three act structure, the seven point story structure method, the into the woods five act structure and superstructure the key to unleashing the power of story and probably many more just to kind of organize myself and adjust my outline which was still very confusing but it helped me. I also watched Outlining Your Manga Visual Storytelling with Oshi episode 7 by Oshi and that really helped me. She has a cool method using flashcards. You write down all your ideas no matter how small and then you sort them however you want, for example chronologically. I tried this method using Notion, I wrote down all my story ideas, everything that will happen, cool dialogue snippets and some random scenes I wanted to include and can now sort them roughly into my outline. I also read all of my comic again, yes all 29 chapters, all 863 pages. I wrote down what I like and what I want to change and sorted them into my outline as well. It took me forever, it was very emotional but it was worth it. <laughs> this method is very practical because my story is really long and complex and the visualization helps me to have a better overview. I will still have some documents where I go into more detail about certain ideas but I think I will stick to this method for now. Also I'm currently transferring all my many many story planning documents to Notion and look how cool it looks! <laughs> 
To end this video, let's summarize my goals and plans in regards to the structure and outline. Most importantly, I want to build a strong foundation for the rest of the story. I want to create an exposition which is understandable but still exciting and I want to build suspense right from the beginning. I now have an outline that I use as a draft to help me stay organized, but I can always change and adjust it so I'm still free with my storytelling in between. I have to learn planning my character arcs better and give everyone agency, importance and screen time. This one will be really hard. <laughs> And last but not least, I am not the best storyteller in the world and I am probably way too ambitious, but I'm super hyped to start the reboot with its changes and I can't wait to improve along the way. That's it for now, thanks for following this reboot ramble. Once again, I greatly appreciate questions, tips and suggestions. I'm only asking you to be respectful when commenting. Thank you! Next part of the reboot ramble will probably be about world building of a new comic version. Stay tuned for it! Once again, huge thanks to my fellow D&D party member and good friend Pan Fried Fish Stick for helping me out with her knowledge and also proofreading this and the previous video script. Sending all the love to you and very hyped for our next D&D session. Thank you so much for watching this. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like or subscribing to see more. See you in the next video. Bye!